So last year I made a home media server slash networked attached storage system with a Raspberry Pi as an ISO project. It's been working flawlessly since then, but today I want to upgrade this system with a newly released single board computer. My Raspberry Pi based system has been working reliably for over a year now. It's been running Open Media Vault version 4, which gives me all that I need in the way of the ability to stream 4K media, have access to Docker apps, and just about as fast as the connection as a spinning disk can offer. But truth be told, it isn't all roses and sunshine. I do still sometimes have issues streaming media on the Raspberry Pi, particularly at high resolutions or when I need to transcode. But today I'm about once. And for that, I'm going to upgrade my NAS with a Zima board. This Celeron powered single board computer is from a 2021 Kickstarter project. I picked up the Zima board 432 variant with a quad core Celeron N3450 with 4 gig of RAM and a rated TDP of just 6 watts. So there's not that much that comes in the box, just a quick start guide, a SATA plus power cable for use with a single 2.5 inch drive, the Zima board and a 3 amp power supply but no Australian adapter, unfortunately. It has Debian Linux pre-installed and supposedly 1080p transcoding capabilities with Intel QuickSync, so I'm hopeful this will be a worthy upgrade. So whilst my Raspberry Pi based system worked well, it had some drawbacks, transcoding and high CPU usage being one of them. Also, it lacks a desktop environment by running OpenMediaVault. The use of the USB to SATA adapter means I can't monitor hard drive smart data and it also requires a bespoke solution to powering the hard drive. With the Zima board, I get dual SATA 6 gig interfaces, dual 1 gig Ethernet interfaces, more USB 3 ports, but less USB ports overall in the Pi, but also a PCIe Gen 2 1x4 interface for expansion cards like 2.5 gig LAN or Wi-Fi. Anyway, the aim of this upgrade was to allow to design in some redundancy to my home NAS. Now I have dual SATA ports and all the benefits that come with them, I feel comfortable running a second hard drive. To do so, I picked up a mini ITX case, the smallest I could find that fit two hard drives, and will use it in conjunction with an old 250 watt ATX power supply I have lying around. Add in some adapters and we should be able to power up the drives and the Zima board conveniently and conventionally. Because the Zima board isn't a mini ITX motherboard, oops, I'm going to have to make a carrier for it to sit on in this case. Some black acrylic will fit with the aesthetic nicely. So for now I'm just going to fit one drive and make sure everything works before possibly nuking my old system's drive. To power the Zima board and the case fan, I'm using a Molex adapter to provide me 12 volts for the Zima board and 5 volts for the fan. Whilst the fan is rated for 12 volts, it works much quieter at 5. I also 3D printed an IO shield so I could mount the rear access cables for a clean look. What you don't see here is me also fitting a USB 3 to header adapter cable so I could make use of the front panel USB 3 ports. Back at my desk, I set up the new drive and added an SMB share.
After getting this working, I proceeded to set up and test Plex. Then I proceeded to fit the old drive from my Pi system into the Zima board system and set up rsync to back up data from the primary disk periodically. rsync is a really simple file synchronization tool which I'll use to sync data weekly from the primary disk to the storage disk and then on a monthly basis errant files will be removed from the system that made it onto the storage disk as part of the weekly sync. This is arguably better than RAID because I have some backup functionality so I can access files that I've deleted on my SMB drive, my primary drive but the downside is, is that it's not true redundancy. If the primary drive fails, there's not zero effort to get my system back up and running again. So how successful was the end result? Well, not so great actually. Transcoding was still failing and CPU usage was high. But then I remembered about Plex God Mode. Hardware accelerated transcoding. Enabling this helped tremendously and I could transcode on devices I previously couldn't with CPU headroom to spare. This feature makes better use of the hardware, something that isn't available on the Raspberry Pi, but does come with the added cost of needing a Plex Pass. Yeah, the Zima board looks a bit ridiculous in that case, I know. Oh, and if you want to know power stats, 35 watt tops is what I saw for operating power with my two drives and a crappy old power supply that's probably 90% inefficient. Not bad. So thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content in the future too. Catch you later. Bye.